Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for being here. As always, thank you so, so much for choosing me over and over again. I'm so glad to have you here. Uh, this time around, we're going to be talking about something that I typically don't really share much on the space. I normally share it in my membership space, but we're going to be talking about, you know, being diagnosed with depression, what I have learned, some of the valuable lessons that I have learned um throughout the year that i will be carrying with me into the new year and some of the things that i've learned about myself but also other things that i've learned about others in terms of how they relate to me and how we talk and respond to one another going forward and um yeah i'm really excited to share that with you if this is something that you would like to see then do please stick around if it's not your cup of tea i totally understand i totally understand but yeah if you're here for the long haul let's go for it let's get into the video All right so one of the biggest things that living with depression or being diagnosed with depression has taught me is that fear and courage can live together in one space fear and courage can coexist together because when you are diagnosed with depression first and foremost you're not aware that you have depression you just think especially in my case with the clinical high functioning depression i'm not aware that i have it because i've been functioning i've been you know the only thing that i knew is that when i would come home i would want to switch off i would want to you know not do anything not I w my world would just really get dark and it would be really difficult to get out of that space but hey ho i wake up in the morning and i attend to my commitments i go to work i do this so to me it didn't really feel like i am depressed it may have felt like i'm a little bit sad yes but then once it started to inhibit parts of my life that i just couldn't control anymore i really couldn't control it in any way anymore that's when i realized that nah, something is wrong and because of that when i got diagnosed with depression i was afraid i was scared that what does this mean uh, do I have to go on medication for the rest of my life? Do I have to? So there was a lot of fear that came with the unknown, not knowing what this is about, what this is, having to read up on it. But at the same time, there's a lot of bravery that came with it because now I know I took the first step and I'm willing to work on myself going forward and focus on the important things that I need to do for myself. I'm sorry sorry about that I need to focus on the important things that I need to do for myself and for my health more especially my mental health going forward so depression has taught me that fear and courage can coexist um, secondly what depression has taught me is that depression looks different on everybody uh, some people do not believe that you're depressed because you're sitting here and you're having a conversation and you're laughing and you're doing lunches and you're going to events and you're doing this and you're doing this they don't believe how could you possibly be depressed it's almost similar to when people say how could you possibly be an introvert you seem like you're very fun and bubbly and this and this and this and it's just like yeah but no no just because you can relate to people just because you can function and go to work and go out to events and all of that does not mean you're not depressed because at the point it is different it looks different to everybody hence why there's major depressive disorders there's high functioning depression clinical depression lots and diff lots not lots but different types of depression that explain what it is that you are going through so i've realized that depression looks different on everybody and working your way through getting better or working your way through the depression also looks different on everybody it's almost like grief grief looks different on everybody just because you may have lost someone you care about but you still manage to go out and be with your friends and do this and do this does not mean you're not grieving people don't know what is going on behind closed doors um but people expect or society sets in place these perceptions and standards that oh when someone is grieving they need to be sad all the time and and black all the time and never wanting to go anywhere and crying every single minute of every single day it does not look the same on everybody and the same goes with depression as well same goes with depression i realized another thing that i realized is that 
depression made me realize how important I am, not only to myself, but to my family. Um, I worked my way through therapy and all of that, which is still ongoing, of course, but through therapy and all of that to deal with some of my inner traumas and some of my inner demons and um, things like that that I am struggling with inwardly. But I realized when I was heading into the facility and going away and not being around my family for about three weeks that my family was so worried about me. How they rallied together to support me. How they came to the facility to bring me food or if I ran out of certain things or if I needed because we couldn't have any visitors at the time. So if I needed... Um, cosmetics or you know just calling me throughout the day at certain points I couldn't answer but at certain points I could um, chatting finding out if I'm okay do I need anything to eat do dar yar 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 and how they came um, at different times being my sister mom dad at different times to make sure that I'm okay and when I came out you know checking in on me they still do even till today checking in on me and all of that to make sure that I'm okay and how they rallied together to support some of the really difficult things that I shared with them coming out of there. And I realized then that, man, I'm important, okay? And it's one of the things that you don't see when you are in a depressed state. You just kind of feel like no one sees it. No one, no one, no one cares, bro. Like, I don't even care. Like, I don't care about my life. No one cares about me. Why should anyone care about me? And it makes me so emotional because when you finally take those steps and your family rallies in and your friends, it's amazing. And you start to realize how important you are to people. And nothing beats just witnessing that and feeling it and feeling it. And yeah 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 <laughs> that's a sentimental one that's a very emotional one okay depression has also made me realize that sometimes you have to go against the grain you have to go against the norm um i went against the norm and especially i think the one person that i butted heads with a lot um after since after being diagnosed was my father because a lot of the time my dad would be like, oh, you're being too sensitive. Oh, you don't have to go to that facility. Why are you there? You're just maybe just sad. Maybe you just need to see a psychologist and whatever. Uh, you, you don't need to be there. Maybe it's not depression. You're just, you're just sad and whatever. And I had to do something that I had never done before, which was call my father out. And it's something that I do a lot more now. So even if he says, oh, he mentioned some sort of, backward comment and says something really doff or whatever, I'll come at him and say, uh-uh, you don't speak like that. That's not what it actually means. Yada, 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 yeah. And I'll correct him, which is going against the grain in my family. Okay. My sister does really, really well. But for me, it's one of the hardest things to do, especially when it comes to my dad. So um, sometimes you have to stand alone sometimes um, and make certain decisions that family friends certain people might not agree with and but it's not for them to agree um this is it's for you you know to manage to make it through each day for you to manage to live with yourself at the end of the day for you to manage to be happy for you to manage to find solace and comfort and all of that kind of stuff things that you lose um, you know, before you find out that you are depressed, you know? So, yeah, it involves a lot of going against the grain, which is something that I did quite a lot with my dad. I don't regret a single bit of it. I really don't. And it's taught me to uh, kind of stand firm and stand, you know, hold my head up high when it came to my opinions. Um, and not standing for what people would say if I knew that it was insulting to me. Like if somebody said, oh, you're too sensitive. That's very hurtful. It's not insulting, but it's very hurtful. Um, and what is wrong with being sensitive? You know, and these are the things that I learned. Um, very valuable lessons that I learned coming out and, and living with depression. 
physical loneliness and mental loneliness are two very, very different things. Very, very different things. When someone is depressed, a lot of the loneliness is mental. You feel alone, like you just don't want to be part of the world anymore. You don't want to be around people anymore. You don't enjoy the things. There's just a reduction in enjoyment of life and being ambitious and being excited about things and being happy to be around people. There's just no joy, essentially. And accompanied with that joy is loneliness. It's an immense feeling of loneliness in your mind. So it's not physical loneliness or whatever. No, those are very, very different things. And depression has taught me that uh, mental loneliness is very, very different to physical loneliness. You can feel lonely because you don't have people around you and whatever, but there is nothing as painful as feeling lonely in your mind and feeling lonely from yourself. <sighs> nothing, nothing as frightening as that. So, yeah, it's taught me that. And that was a long journey to get over that or not get over that, but to, to work through that and, and heal from that work on the healing from that was a long and hard and arduous journey for me. And it's still ongoing. It really is also still ongoing. So it's raw and it's unfiltered. It's a really raw, unfiltered version of you. Everything is dark. Everything just feels, your dreams feel like they're cursed and they're never going to work out. And, you know, your relationships with people feel like, nah, it's only a matter of time before we fall out or it's never going to work out or whatever. It's just a raw, unfiltered part of you that you cannot control because it is a chemical imbalance in your brain. So it's not something you can physically control. Hence, a lot of the time, you have to get onto medication for things like this. So um, it's not something you can physically control, but it's there. It's raw, it's unfiltered, it's dark. You don't wanna get up, you don't wanna shower. Well, my depression works a little bit differently to that, but on most days where I don't have to go to work, where I didn't have to go to work, I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to open the blinds. I didn't want to leave my bed. I couldn't make my bed. So how am I going to leave it if I can't make it? Um, it was those kinds of things. So it's a really raw, dark part of you that comes out. And um, that's not what you see a lot on camera uh, or in videos or whatever. You see high functioning. Okay, you see the, oh, she, she seems like she's got it together. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's, it's raw and it's dark and it's very, very much unfiltered. The importance of listening. Um, I feel like my listening skills have definitely improved uh, in the last six months. And because I faced my self, by actually speaking and listening to myself and, and listening, speaking out loud, right? By actually speaking some of the traumas and, 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 and demons that I had to face in therapy and speaking them out loud, I was forced to listen to myself. And because of that, it enhances your listening skills, especially when you're listening to others as well. So I learned a lot about listening and the importance of listening and reading the right things from what people are saying. And it's helped me so much, especially with my schooling as well, because you need to read the right things from what people are saying to you. And I picked that up and I really, really feel like going through this journey for me was one of the biggest catalysts of how my listening has improved um, and, and how I listen um, has improved over the, the, the months. So, yeah. That's pretty much some of the valuable lessons that I have learned ever since being diagnosed with depression. And I am grateful and I'm thankful that I learned those things because I feel like they've changed me. They've changed me for the better and not for the worse. And I couldn't be more grateful. I really just couldn't be more grateful. 
Okay, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you again for choosing me over and over again. And if you did enjoy the video, please subscribe and join the channel. Also, maybe consider being a member. There's going to be a lot of footage in the membership space. And there's going to be a lot of footage in the membership space. And yeah, that's pretty much it from me. Thank you again for choosing me over and over again. Until the next video. Bye.